Hi, and welcome to Micronaut Monday. I'm Tom Scholey, author of Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics. I am Stan, a graphic biography of the legendary Stan Lee. And Jack Kirby's Star Warriors, starring Adam Starr and the Solar Legion. All three of those books are available for pre-order by following the pre-order link in the show notes below. So we're up to issue four of the Micronauts, Death's Stronghold, a uh, great cover with um, Baron Karza doing his thing, you know, uh, the same way Darth Vader is, is sort of the icon of Star Wars, uh, so too is Baron Karza for Micronauts. And so we start with some cool space opera stuff. There's another big military push going on. While the Micronauts are stranded on Earth, life on the microscopic planet of Homeworld goes on pretty much as usual. A hunting we will go. Bill Mantlo, writer. Michael Golden, artist. Joseph Rubenstein, embellisher. Al Milgram, editor. Jim Shooter, editor-in-chief. Costanza Letters, Gafford Colors. And, I mean, the same way I note it in um, Thor's Day comics, Michael Golden is a co-writer on this stuff. And sometimes they, they, the, the credits reflect it, I think, this time. It was, you know, more of an oversight than not, than, you know, trying to deny him credit, since they have been pretty good about that, uh, establishing that he's, like, you know, co-storyteller on this. But I know he did a lot of heavy lifting, and that's part of why he left the book after 12 issues. It was just you know, really, you know, really difficult uh, doing all that heavy lifting. And you'll see the change in quality of the stories when Michael Golden leaves the book. Baron Karza's dog soldiers are, are you know, doing this roundup. There's, there's like a resistance fighters. One, one, of, the rebe- one of the royalist rebels uh, is, is a woman named Slug. And they're, they're trying to, you know, capture her in this roundup we get some of the toys i think these are called the phobos units Um, they were basically like a robotron toy with a different head this is from the toys also and uh and then they have this like sort of scooper that like scoops people up and slug is disguising herself we're deep underground we're starting deep underground homeworld and going up higher and higher to the surface reaching ever higher the ramps become highways the towers of the rich pierce the azure sky this then is homeworld a planet where no blade of grass no tree no flower grows a world of cold steel and cold-blooded murder and yet there is warmth to be found in the raging atomic fires of the pit that powers the infernal machinery of that stronghold of death, the body banks. So here's, you know, some more borrowing from Jack Kirby's fourth world. I think of uh, Micronauts as, as Jack Kirby's fourth world in miniature. And so they have, you know, fire pits or at least one fire pit on this sort of you know, desolate world that's just like covered with machinery and great shot of Baron Karza. Again, you know, so much fun to draw. And Baron Karza shoots off his hand, which is something the toy can do. You press this little button, and the hand shoots off. And, you know, strangles him from afar. The thing that, uh, you know, Darth Vader does, uh, leaves him dead, and it pops back on. Look at this. I mean, that is a pretty cool, ominous drawing. You know, Michael Golden just showing what he can do. And we find out that Slug... Uh, allowed herself to be captured because she's going to go undercover in the body banks to try and find Prince Argon, who's rumored to be there. So this is, you know, this ongoing plot that we'll learn more about next issue. Now we're back to the Micronauts. Uh, More of this inside the ship kind of stuff with cool lighting, great drawing, a deep shadow. There's some bickering and and, and jokes and whatnot. And so um, they're looking for Bug. And Bug is trying to get back to them. He knows that in this shoebox is a spaceship that he could possibly repair. He's gonna he's gonna follow them. I'm not sure what Steve Coffin's shirt says. Liquid something. And then uh, he turns on this sprinkler. And again, this is you know Michael Golden. He's got his own like very unique style that's very distorted and warped. But he is you know he's really good about doing his homework and. And, you know, studying, you know, real sprinkler systems to sort of draw them accurately, but still have his style, have, you know, he really knows what he's doing. Um, Bug gets splashed and yuck, he hates water. They've got water on this world. Yeah. 
but they've painted uh, Bugs Planet into a corner because they've said, oh, there's no, uh, the trees aren't green on his planet. They've made reference to that. So, you know, when they go to his planet, you know, they're stuck with that. And if they, if they show a green tree, then that's, that's a continuity error. And then uh, they've established that there's no water on his world and he's grossed out by water. So it's like, okay, when we go to his world, we can't show any water. So he makes a break for it, grabs onto the back of their car. And, uh, you know, we're learning some backstory about uh, uh, Steve and Ray Coffin and that he, Steve's happy that his dad is showing some interest in him uh, for the first time since his mom died. But it's kind of like, yeah, he's just interest. you know, he's only interested because dad's actually paying attention to me for the first time since mom died. Sure, but only because now he's got something to show down at the Cape, my spacemen found in his backyard. So the, the truck's going, uh, they pass through. We find out that Ray Coffin, a former astronaut, has a nickname, Orbiting Coffin. So, you know, there's themes within it. And so, you know, uh, Ray's dad is an astronaut, much like Commander Ran on his mission in, in a sort of, you know, Orbiting Coffin, you know, in this uh, death-like cryogenic sleep. And, you know, if this, you know, if you were sort of deconstructing this or, or you know, Maybe like this, like little spaceman that he find that Ray, that Steve Coffin finds in his backyard and plays with. Uh, you know, maybe it's something that he imagined uh, as a sort of you know idealized version of his father that he's uh, you know disconnected from, like a way for him to to connect with his father. You could sort of you know imagine that as sort of a them thematic thing. And from the parking area, only the facade of the vast scientific complex is visible. The legend on the main building reads, Human Engineering Life Laboratories. It was only after it was named that someone realized its acronym was HELL. There's Bug hitching a ride. They're going in. There's a lot of security. Ah, yes, aliens. Wasn't it a close encounter, I think you said? I suppose the current Hollywood fair is responsible for this latest imaginative outbreak of, Dad didn't believe me either, Professor, till I showed him this. Oh, my. You have got something there, haven't you? This is Philip Prometheus, who, who runs Human Engineering Life Laboratories. We'll see more of him next issue. And yeah, the Micronauts, it's a lot of sort of chasing back and forth. So Bug is trying to find the rest of the Micronauts in their spaceship. They're trying to find Bug, so they go back to where they last saw him at the Coffin Residence, but he's left... So, you know, it sort of, you know, delays this sort of chase, this sort of, you know, cat and mouse. Again, great, great drawings, great lighting inside the spaceship, sort of flying around. And more of this sort of, you know, Marvel kind of stuff of, of you know, the average guy's view on everything. I heard tell of Florida mosquitoes, but this and another sighting is chalked up to too many pina coladas. So they're sort of bouncing around in the garage. They smack against one of the walls and crash. So now, you know, they're going to have to spend the next issue uh, repairing their ship. You know, again, these are these are ways as like sort of the, the other parts of the plot are in, unfolding and going forward. You know, this sort of gives the Micronauts something to do. Shaitan and his crew, you know, fly back. We saw them, you know, warp away in the previous issue. We're home. In disgrace, two battle cruisers destroyed by my brother Acroyer and his cursed companions. Baron Karza will not be pleased. I am not pleased, Prince, Prince of, of the Acroyers. Karza, then you know everything. I hereby sever our alliance. You are useless to me. And the thought wash I used on your people so that they would think your brother, the true prince, dead, is herewith removed. No, the Acroyers revere my brother. If they learn that I betrayed him, they will destroy me. Shaitan fucked up. Baron Karza has a zero tolerance policy and, and cuts him off. And, and so Shaitan is, you know, no longer part of uh, Baron Karza's army. And so uh, it's a pretty cool development. I, li I like... I like all the palace intrigue and stuff. And and it, it plays out really well in the later issues. So now they got this little, uh, all right, the Endeavor's dry docked, but we still have enough auxiliary power in the exploratory Astro Station to begin our search for bug. Biotron will stay here to effect repairs 
and watch for any sign of pursuit from the microverse. Um, they're flying around in this. This is, you know, the, the HMS Endeavor is not a, a toy that, that was, you know, sold as, as part of the Micronauts line, but this Astro Station is. So, you know, a little bit of, little bit of product placement here. So they're gonna be tooling around in this, uh, you know, next issue. Great shot here, great drawing of, of, of Biotron. I referred to him as Robotron er, earlier in this issue. That was, a, that was a slip. So he's gonna fix the ship while they're off, you know, looking for bug. Next ish, the Prometheus Pit. Next issue, that's gonna be some good stuff. I, I really like this issue, it moved around a little bit, had so, some cool, you know, large plot developments, large sort of, you know, the space opera mythology kind of stuff. Uh, a lot going on there in this issue. And then, you know, a little bit of uh, ins and outs with the Micronauts and then, and then setting up, you know, H-E-L-L -L nicely, which is gonna really pay off next issue. Each issue, you know, the mystery deepens, gets more and more intriguing, and uh, next issue really turns a corner where it's like, ooh, you know what? I think this might be my favorite comic. Um, and we get this, we get this really nice schematic of the HMS Endeavor with, you know, all the little ins and outs of what's going on. There's the scale in comparison to Commander Ran. Lots of verbiage. Another marvelous Micronauts pinup page: the Homeworld Microship Endeavor. The first faster than light microship to be developed on the subatomic planet homeworld. Its purpose to explore the microverse. Yeah, I love this kind of stuff. So uh, that's it, issue four of the Micronauts. I'm Tom Scholey, author of Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics, and I Am Stan, a graphic biography of the legendary Stan Lee. And also coming in September from Image Comics. Jack Kirby's Star Warriors, starring Adam Star and the Solar Legion. If you like comic book space opera, like the Micronauts, be on the lookout for that book. There are pre-order links for all three of those books in the show notes below. I'll see you next time for Micronaut Monday.